On April 12, 1861, Confederate forces opened fire on Fort Sumter. The Civil War had begun. President Lincoln called for 75,000 troops to repress the rebellion. More than that number enlisted. Many of these men gathered in and around Washington, D.C. in sprawling camps. Some brought their families with them. American soldiers had not fought a real war in more than a decade, and for many, this conflict would be the adventure of their lives. Passions ran strong on both sides. Army ranks swelled. By July, calls for action reached a fever pitch with the Union rallying cry, on to Richmond. In July 1861, four armies were positioned in the vicinity. General Erwin McDowell's army defended the Union capital. General Robert Patterson's force was 60 miles to the northwest. Opposing Patterson in the Shenandoah Valley was General Joseph E. Johnston, but the largest Confederate force under General P.G.T. Beauregard stood poised to march on Washington, D.C. In mid-July 1861, General McDowell pushed his army westward to confront the Confederate force. Beauregard fell back to a position where he could defend the vital railroad junction at Manassas while protecting the roads to Richmond. Covering a six-mile front, Beauregard defended the crossings of a meandering stream called Bull Run. McDowell sent Union Division Commander Daniel Tyler on a reconnaissance mission toward Blackburn's Ford. Israel Richardson's brigade advanced upon and encountered stiff resistance from Confederate troops under James Longstreet. Tyler's repulse convinced McDowell he should cross elsewhere. Meanwhile, in the Shenandoah Valley, General Joseph E. Johnston slipped away from Union General Robert Patterson. Johnston's troops marched to the Manassas Gap Railroad, where they boarded trains for Manassas. It was the first time that troops were rushed to a battlefield by rail. This movement placed the Confederates on equal numerical terms with the Union Army. On the morning of July 21st, 1861, McDowell again advanced Tyler's division toward Bull Run, this time to occupy the Southerners in this front while 13,000 Union soldiers in two divisions conducted a circuitous flanking maneuver. This column of inexperienced and exhausted soldiers crossed Bull Run and Cat Harpen Run and emerged at Sedley Springs on the flank and rear of the Confederate Army. As the head of the Union column approached Matthews Hill, Confederates under Colonel Shanks Evans moved to stop the Union advance. South Carolinians and Louisianians engaged Rhode Island troops. The Confederates, though outnumbered, actually attacked the Union position. Both sides bring more troops into the fight. Confederates under General Bernard B. arrive and extend the Confederate flanks. Ultimately, Union troops are able to bring more infantry and more cannons to the fight, and the Southerners are forced to fall back to Henry Hill. As disorganized Confederate soldiers reformed on the backside of Henry Hill, fresh troops arrived. General Thomas Jackson's Brigade of Virginians formed the heart of the Confederate position. Jackson bolstered his line with 13 short-range cannons. After hours of delay, the Union Army finally moves toward Henry Hill. Eleven cannons under Captains Charles Griffin and James Ricketts take position on both sides of the Henry House. This will be the focal point of the battle. The Confederate artillery is well positioned for the short-range fight, and they disseminate the Union artillerymen and their battery horses. Union infantry support arrives, only to be pushed back by the Confederates, with Jeb Stewart's horsemen riding into their mist. Charles Griffin moves two cannons over to enfilade the Confederate line, but before he can open fire, the Confederates attack and capture the cannons. The Union counterattacks and recaptures the guns. Henceforth, this will be an infantryman's fight with both sides vying for possession of the Union cannons. The Union launches several bloody assaults and gets weaker as the day goes on. The Confederates are only getting stronger. They bring fresh troops to the field, extend their lines beyond the Union flank. By the time the last Union reinforcements arrive, they move on to Chin Ridge and finally are already outflanked. The Southerners are able to easily push these troops off the battlefield and they retreat along with the rest of the Union Army. Union forces retired across Sedley Ford and Stone Bridge. Disorganized Confederates pursued and helped turn the Union retreat into a rout. It was the bloodiest battle in American history up to that time.